Lincoln Riley should have been fired due to his coaching performance last year. Fired? No. He, look, I think he's engaging in some hyperbole. But, Coach, I know you agree with me on this. USC has to have some buyer's regret. Because, look, they Has thought they were, I mean, they absolutely thought that they're getting a playoff level coach, which he's been to the playoffs. But right now, ask any USC fan, would you rather have the guy you have now or the guy in Eugene, Oregon, building a monster in Dan Lanning, who's dominating the West Coast recruiting scene and branching out nationally? And the one thing about Lincoln Riley that I think has really been disappointing, and Coach, you know this firsthand, He's alienated a lot of the high school coaches. You're not allowed to view practices. You're not allowed to be at the facilities as you once were. You have to do that stuff nowadays. You have to be a program ambassador in a lot of ways. Look, this is a big year for Lincoln Riley. I'm not saying he has to win the new Big Ten or go to the playoffs, but he has to win eight to nine games and show improvement on defense and show that he's a complete football coach or – I'm not saying the seat's going to get warm. I do think there will be heightened scrutiny. Uh, Steve, I started to show off with, it, with, with, my, with my take, and I, I said California has no more blue blood schools. USC is a failed program. UCLA is a program failing. San Diego State just isn't big enough on the national scale. Cal and Stanford are in, let's face it, uh, two shithole third, part, third world countries right now, and it's hard to get in academically. <laughs> uh, it's very hard to get in there academically. And then who wants to go pay the taxes and, and come to California? And I, I broke this whole thing down. I'm like, I don't believe either Aaron Rodgers, the Troy Aikmans, the Reggie Bushes, Carson Palmer's, Andrew Lux. I don't believe they're either A, being developed in high school anymore because of seven on seven and all the transfers, or B, they're not staying in this talent rich state of California. Look at this graphic I started to show off with. Do you know that these are California's best and the country's best? And they're going to Bama, Bama, AM, yeah. Missouri. Like, how is SC and UCLA losing this talent? How do you lose Nico to Tennessee? How do you lose? How do you lose uh, Bryce Young to Alabama? How do you lose CJ Stroud to Ohio State? I, I, I just never would have happened under Pete Carroll, Terry Donahue, Bob Toledo. Those guys would have figured a way. And I get it, pay for play now and all that. But we're in SC. This used to Coach. be the home of Snoop Dogg would come to the sidelines, Smith, Steve. Like. You don't think CJ would want to play with Snoop Dogg being there at practice? Like, this don't make sense. What is going on right now with West Coast football reminds me a lot of what happened to UCLA and Pac-10 basketball in the 80s. When it, when the rise of the Big East happened and cable TV bloomed and you saw a lot of programs east of the Mississippi become basketball powers, I remember for about a seven, eight-year stretch, our best high school basketball players from Stevie Thompson, John Williams, uh, Chris Mills originally went to Kentucky. Tracy they, Murray. Tracy, well, Tracy Murray actually went to UCLA. He was part of the revival. Oh, you're, talking about leaving. you're talking about leaving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. a lot of these guys left to play in the yeah. Big East Paul and Pierce other conferences. Yeah. So I, this doesn't necessarily surprise me. Um, UCLA, like I said, until they bring back Joe Bruin as the original mascot and logo, they're not serious about football. But, but let, me, uh, let me show you this graphic real quick. And I believe this is, has to do with it. This is as of yesterday in California high school. High schools, 17,000 transfers in high school. <laughs> now, now, how is how am I? And Steve, Steve Kim, you're my recruiting coordinator. Hey, Steve, uh, the kid at Corona Centennial, make sure you're on his ass. Uh, but coach, coach, sorry, he's not coach, there no more. You don't more. think this happens in Florida? I heard in no, Florida it does. It does. It does. that Pop Warner kids change teams. It, it does, but that's Seriously, my point. Seriously, I I've been told that there are kids who are 12 years old that have played Pop Warner or Optimus Ball, that they've already changed parks and teams three, four times. Uh, know, it's I, happening I don't everywhere. know if it's just a California thing, Coach. I really no, don't. No, it's not. It's not. It's not. But the the point I'm making is California being so populous and as big as it is, it is almost an impossibility for these guys, unless you're their number one guy on their board, to track him to four different high schools. Florida is a little more compact. It's a little more talent rich in certain areas. Like, let's just be honest. We're going to go up to, you know, to the panhandle in Florida. There's very few uh, compared to Miami, Dade, Polk, Lakeland, Orlando. Wow. Area. Yeah. So, like, you come to California, you got to go from top to bottom and then say, okay, well, why did this kid go from? Because we got kids now from Northern California coming to Southern California, and then it'll transfer to IMG in Miami. Yeah. I mean, Coach, there, there are kids, believe it or not, that actually go uh, – 
a couple of kids have transferred from California to Miami Central. Yeah. Uh, which is the you know most famous for me for having Ruben Bain and I believe uh, uh, Willis McGahey went there years ago. That that's a con- con- that is a consistent producer of Division One talent. But kids are now coming into Florida from other states beyond IMG. But I, look, here's the problem. Going back, this is where SC is going to have a problem, and every school's gone through this. Once you lose a foothold in your region and a team start rating it, it takes years to get it back. It really does. And right now, Oregon is the school on the West Coast. I think Oregon is a shoo-in for the playoffs if they have any type of help. I think they're a top three or four roster. And that's going to be the school that even kids at modern day uh, are going to say, you know what? We have an SC tradition, but we kind of like Oregon. In fact, I think they got a defensive tackle uh, that was a top 50 player from modern day who's now at Oregon. Everyone was on him. So, look, this is a big year. And I, I do wonder about West Coast football because when I thought of West Coast football, I always thought, oh, it's the Pac-10. Pac-10, Pac-12. Now I think of a bunch of schools spread out and, and a couple of them are in the Big Ten. It doesn't hey, make hey, sense, Steve, I, but it is what it is. Steve, I, listen, I've been recruiting my, I've been recruiting Central for a long, long time, the whole area. I recruited, uh, if you remember this this couple of names, Stanley Jean Baptiste. Um, yes, back in, I remember back Back in 12, 11, 12, he was almost going to be a Juco kid. I was recruiting Stanley, Jean Baptiste. Plus, um, if you remember, the original Antonio Brown went to this same school, and so did Najee Davenport because I recruited Najee back in 01, 02 out of mm. Central. And then, uh, yeah. you know, you know, Dalvin and James Cook went there, and so did Devontae Freeman. Yeah. So they've had guys. Like Najee was out, no late doubt. 90s. Like they- he was uh, one of the Butch Davis guys. His uh, freshman year, I believe, was – 97 and then in 98 people don't remember Najee with two good knees he could have been Marcus Dupree he would have actually probably been the guy on that national title team but I was actually at the game where he blew out his knee against Ohio State at the kickoff classic Smitty but before you were even born they used to have this game called the kickoff classic in New Jersey Smitty and it always signified the beginning of college football there was no such thing as week zero so what they used to have is a game in New Jersey called the Kickoff Classic. Miami played Ohio State. Santana Moss put on a, a devastating show of playmaking. And then, Smitty, they used to have a kickoff game, I think it was sponsored by Disneyland on the West Coast at Anaheim Stadium. And I went to a couple of those games. Florida State played BYU one year. I remember USC got hammered in John Robinson's return by North Carolina with the young Mac Brown. But uh, those were the days. Now we have week zero and teams playing in Ireland, guys. FS Georgia Tech. <laughs> Get Man. ready. 